You've heard the reports. The globe is warming, and it's our fault, and the consequences will be terrible. But you should know there is another side to this story, and scientists who've tried to tell it are often threatened, which makes me say, give me a break. The world is heating up fast, and we have ourselves to blame. Global warming is real, and we humans are almost certainly the cause. Books warn that the Earth is under fire, a suicidal planet's approaching a boiling point and a toxic burn. Children are frightened. I worry. My mom worries. The water might rise, and it might flood the whole town. We won't be able to survive for long. And people say, since global warming is because of man, it must be fixed by man now. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. This ad council, PSA, says years. ignoring the coming crisis is like putting our kids in front of a train. That won't affect me. What are you most worried will happen? We'll all die. Are there some people who say this isn't true? Yes. 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 Might they be right? No. no. How do you know they're not right? Well, because the Earth is getting hotter. Where do you learn this? I saw the Al Gore um, video. And the Oscar goes to An Inconvenient Truth. Davis. The global warming documentary featuring Vice President Al Gore has been seen by millions. People have proclaimed him a prophet, a cultural icon, a conquering hero. You are a true champion for the cause, Mr. Gore. And last week, he won a Nobel Peace Prize. The Oscars were followed by other worldwide media events. You are live Earth. With all this hoopla, it's no surprise that 86% of Americans say global warming is a serious problem. Global warming is now, by anybody's measure, a crisis. But is it a crisis? Yes, the globe is warming, but is it really all our fault? And is it true that the debate is over? No. What you think you know may not be so. For example, in An Inconvenient Truth, Gore says if we allow the globe to warm, terrible things will happen, and sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. Yeah, maybe like the height of this building. We'll probably just like drown and we'll die. This is what would happen to the sea level in Florida. This is what would happen to San Francisco Bay. Maybe. Maybe in thousands of years, says the IPCC, the group that shared last week's Nobel Prize with the vice president. But in 100 years, the oceans might rise 7 to 24 inches, not 20 feet. A faster buildup of heat here. Mr. Gore also talks about melting ice caps. That's not good for creatures like polar bears. They show this heart-rending cartoon. A new scientific study shows that for the first time, they're finding polar bears that have actually drowned. But I bet you didn't know that polar bears appear to be doing all right. Future warming may hurt them, but right now the World Conservation Union and the U.S. Geological Survey say most populations of polar bears are stable or increasing. There is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others. The most impressive demonstration in Mr. Gore's movie is the big graph of carbon dioxide levels. Here's what the temperature has been on our Earth. Now, one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, did they ever fit together? <laughs> My goodness. I knew that carbon dioxide is thought to amplify course. temperature increases. But this shows a clear cause and effect for 600,000 years. When carbon rose, so did temperature. It suggests that carbon levels control temperature. But the real inconvenient truth is that carbon increases came after temperature rose, usually hundreds of years later. Temperature went up first. I wanted to ask Mr. Gore about that and other things, but he wouldn't agree to talk about this. Why should he when he and others say... The debate's over. The science is agreed upon. The debate is over and the science is in. It's absurd for people to say that sort of thing. It's really wrong. These scientists are among those who say the debate is by no means over. Right there. John Christie and Roy Spencer won NASA's Medal for Exceptional Achievement for figuring out how to get temperature data from satellites. They agree that the Earth is warmed. We all agree that it's warmed, I think. The big question is, and the thing that we dispute, is is it because of mankind? Climate changes, they point out. It always has, with or without man. Early last century, even without today's big output of carbon dioxide, the Arctic went through a warm period. The media fretted about that then, too. 
And Greenland's temperatures rose 50% faster in the 1920s than they're rising now. Some scientists say the warming may be caused by changes in the sun, or ocean currents, or changes in cloud cover, or other things we don't understand. The debate is not over. And anyway, who's to say that yesterday's temperature was the perfect one? If temperatures keep rising now, these scientists say we don't know that that will be all bad. The fact is when the climate changes, there are gains and there are losses. But Tim Ball, who studies the history of climate change, points out that all we hear about is the bad news from the IPCC, that massive group of global warming scientists. A thousand scientists. Two thousand scientists. 2,500 scientists say the globe is getting warmer and we are to blame. There is the most unmitigated rubbish uh, talked about. Paul Ryder of the Pasteur Institute and John Christie say they were members of the IPCC. That so-called group of scientists, they say, is not what people think it is. The IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It is governments who uh, nominate people. You'll find in many chapters that there are people who are not scientists at all. Who are they? They were essentially activists. Members of groups like Greenpeace were involved. And when the IPCC report came out, not all its members agreed with what was said. We were not asked to look at a particular statement and sign our names to it at all. I got very frustrated and I resigned. But the IPCC still listed Ryder as part of the so-called consensus. I contacted the, the IPCC and said, look, I've resigned. I don't want to have anything more to do with this. And they said, well, you've been involved, so um, you're still on the list. Only when he threatened to sue, he says, did they take his name off the report. The IPCC denies that that happened. Today, scientists like these are often smeared as deniers. We have Holocaust deniers, we have climate change deniers, and to be honest, I don't think there's a great deal of difference. Deniers are confusing the issue and delaying solutions. Often they're accused of being purchased by a well-funded denial machine. These corporate toadies lying to you and telling you that global warming doesn't exist. Good morning. The illusion of a debate has been purchased with millions of dollars a year. Aren't you guys all on the tape? <laughs> I wish I was. I wouldn't be driving a 1992 car and living in a leaky apartment. These scientists all say they don't get any money from business, yet some have been threatened. One email said, you will not live long enough to see global warming. And even more direct than that. We stick our necks out. Um, we do get hurt. Is this what the global warming debate has come to? One side saying, shut up. Dissent must not be heard. The truth is that while everyone agrees the Earth is warmed, lots of good scientists don't agree that it's mostly our fault and don't agree that it's going to be a catastrophe. So when the Nobel Prize winner says, The debate's over. The debate's over. I say, give me a break.